and welcome. In our lesson today, we are going to discuss the fascinating topic of mitosis. So mitosis is a type of cell division whereby a cell divides to form two daughter cells. Now these daughter cells are identical to each other and to the parent cell. The reason why this is so is because they have the same number of chromosomes as the parent cell and therefore tend to have the similar characteristics. Two interesting things about mitosis is that Number one, mitosis is very important to organisms and the reason for this is because it's required for the growth of an organism and to repair any damaged tissues. Two is that the time taken for mitosis to take place differs from one organism to another. So you find that in certain organisms, cells can take just a matter of minutes to complete mitosis, while in other organisms, it can even take hours. Now, when discussing mitosis, we are going to mention chromosomes quite a bit. So let's just, just remind ourselves what chromosomes are. Now, chromosomes are structures that are found within the cell of every organism. Now, chromosomes consist of two chromatids that are attached to one another at the center. This point is referred to as the centromere. Located along the length of the chromosome are structures called genes. Now, genes are the ones that determine the characteristic of an organism. Genes are made up of a protein called DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid. The number of chromosomes that is present in every organism is different, but it's always fixed for a particular species. For example, in humans, you're going to have 23 pairs of chromosomes, 46 chromosomes in total, in the cells of our body. Back to mitosis. So, mitosis consists of five stages, interface, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and lastly, telophase, or simply referred to as IPMAT. These stages are not distinct. They simply describe the behavior of chromosomes or how chromosomes behave during mitosis. The first stage is known as the interface stage. Now, in this stage, no actual cell division takes place. And the reason is because in this stage, the cell prepares itself to carry out cell division. Now, it does so by carrying out three distinct activities. Number one is that you're going to have duplication of genetic material. This simply means that the genetic material, the chromosomes that are present, are going to be doubled. Now, in case you're wondering why this is so, just remember that at the end of mitosis, we want to have two daughter cells with each daughter cell having the same number of chromosomes as the parent cell. So we need to have double the number of chromosomes to ensure that each daughter cell will have an identical set. Next step is buildup of energy. So you're going to have buildup of a lot of energy in the form of ATP. This energy is going to be used to power up the process of uh, cell division. Lastly, synthesis of new organelles. So you're going to have manufacture of new organelles, new organelles being formed such as Golgi apparatus, centrioles, mitochondria and ribosomes. Why? Because you need to have enough organelles for both daughter cells at the end of mitosis. So these are the three main activities that take place in the interface stage. Moving on to the next stage, prophase. So in the prophase stage, the cell undergoes the following events. Number one is that the chromosomes condense. Now by condensing, I simply mean they become shorter and thicker. Now what else happens? You're going to have the centrioles separate from one another and start to move to opposite poles of the cell. Next thing is that spindle fibers start to form. Now what are spindle fibers? Spindle fibers are simply fibers that are made from protein. Now these play a very crucial role in cell division. They form this network of fibers that allow separation of chromosomes to take place. Last, the nuclear membrane and the nucleolus start to disappear. So the nucleolus disappears completely and then the nuclear membrane now starts to break down. So it starts to break down in the prophase stage such that by the time metaphase stage appears, it has completely disappeared. Proceeding to the next stage, metaphase. Now, apart from the disappearance of the nuclear membrane, what happens in this stage? The spindle fibers lengthen, they become longer. Now, the chromosomes also align themselves at the equator. This simply means that they arrange themselves at the center of the cell. You'll note that the chromosomes are attached to the spindle fibers by their centromeres. This is what happens in the metaphase. 
proceeding to the anaphase, which is the fourth stage. In this stage, the spindle fibers shorten. Now, when they do so, what happens is that they pull the chromosomes. So, you find that the chromatids are forced to separate at the centromere, with each chromatid being pulled to opposite poles of the cell. After this happens, the spindle fibers start to disappear. Last stage, telophase. In this stage, the chromatids have now collected on the opposite poles of the cell. A nuclear membrane forms on each set of chromatids, which are now going to be referred to as chromosomes. The chromosomes become less distinct, you know, they assume their thread-like appearance. Now, the cytoplasm then divides, leading to the formation of two identical daughter cells. Now, the division of the cytoplasm is known as cytokinesis. One last thing to note is that unlike animal cells, plant cells do not undergo cytokinesis. How is the parent cell separated? This is by the use of a cell plate. So you find that in the telophase stage, a cell plate appears within the cytoplasm and it grows such that it ends up separating the cell into two daughter cells. And that brings us to the end of this amazing lesson. See you next time.